Yeah, hello and welcome to our Stylite webinar today on a Wednesday. Our topic today is the update to eGroup Wear 16.1, when and how. So we will talk about important update infos. Please first give us a short feedback if you can all hear us and if you all see our screen. There's Nathan and Peter. Nathan is typing. Nope, he stopped. Peter is typing. <laughs> Peter can hear us, obviously. Someone else? Ah, uh, okay. Nathan's also there. Hi. Okay. My name is Eva Wertheimer and today I'm here with uh, Ralf Becker, our Director of Software Development. Hi, Ralf. Hi, Eva. What and are you talking <laughs> about today? Yeah, I mean, as we are, the topic is about the update process. I'm here to answer more technical questions, what's necessary and how to do the update, what are the requirements and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we also have Birgit here today as a general consultant for the update process. Hi, Birgit. Hi, Eva, and hi, everybody out there. Happy that you join our webinar today to see what questions are there regarding the update process or the release process and getting your installation, your eGroupware up to 16.1. Um, one general thing first, if you have any questions, please write them to our chat and we are also recording the webinar. So if you are late or you couldn't watch it, then we will um, record it and then send you a link via our newsletter. We already have some typical questions concerning the process, like um, where are we in the release process right now? Yeah, so just like to start a bit more in the past because we created the beta tester groups some weeks or at least months ago where we invited to participate in that beta tester group. We um, created own instances on our hosting farm for the 16 for the upcoming 16.1 and they have been customers inserting their real data as a backup into to test with that one we got many many um, answers feedback from all our beta testers so that helped a lot to improve and um, check the quality what we now have in 16.1. We also moved our own installation and our support center already weeks ago to 16.1. And we have first customers running their installation, their production system now on 16.1. And I think we also did some release candidates in the last weeks, Ralph. Yeah, we had a first public release candidate by the beginning of the month. And yeah, just yesterday we released the third release candidate, which contained um, many improvements concerning the active sync synchronization of Outlook. So with that release candidate, with the third release candidate, you can now sync quite well uh, Outlook version 2013 or 2016. Um, with EcoVerse 16.1. That was one of the yeah, major improvements of the third release candidate. Um, we can tell you now, uh, we will have uh, the final release by Friday morning of our Central European time. So uh, there will probably be not much changes, not much bug fixes necessary as far as I can tell right now to the third release candidate. So Friday means 1st of July. 1st of July, yeah. Okay. Um, one typical question, of course, is when can I update? Yeah, for sure you can update, I would say, at any time now. So this means we make a difference in between hosting customers and community or APL customers in that regard. Hosting customers, we have or will apply a process that we inform our hosting customers at what time we like to update them to 16.1. So it will be not whole customers at once. We will do it in some, let's say, packages. Um, and But inform you as a customer in, um, 
in the next days if your update should run and at what time it should run. And if it doesn't suit to, into your schedule, you just have to answer to that e uh, email and let us know if it doesn't fit for you and then you'll find another day. So that's more or less what goes on with our hosting customers. So we try to get all our hosting customers as soon as possible, getting them to the new 16.1 version. But for sure, if there are reasons to stay longer on 14.3 for whatever time, just get in touch with us. And for community or um, own installations with our EPL version, I give over to Ralph that he could answer how update or upgrade works in that regard. Yeah, I mean, the question is how does up Great work in eCooper. It's basically two things which we have to do. One is to get you to the new versions of the sources of the PHP code. That's the first part. And the second part is running a script which adapts your existing database to the new version. For example, 16.1 added a new field in the mail account, which is called an archive folder, where I can, with a couple of clicks, archive a mail to into a yearly structure. Um, that field needs to be added to your database and that's done by that script. So two steps, first sources being updated and second step is um, updating the database. So there are several steps that a normal user wouldn't, wouldn't really realize or be <sighs> aware. Yeah, if two are several, yes, yeah, there are several steps. <laughs> um, usually you don't have to do that on your own and run through like a checklist it basically means if you follow our recommendations for installation so you have a package installation mm -hmm. your administrator is using command depending a bit on the linux distribution something like yum update or aptitude update and that will install the new sources and afterwards run that script to update your database mm -hmm. Yeah, then our next slide shows some further questions. First one is about auto update for community users. Yeah, so the updates or the packages for the community users will come on with a release on the 1st of July. An auto update means if your installation is an auto update, you get automatically to the new 16.1 version. But auto update in general as a process, I hand over to Ralph to describe that a bit more in detail. Yeah, auto update is basically a feature of your Linux distribution. It means the distribution checks regularly, either at a certain time or a couple of times per day, if there are new versions of the installed packages. So if you have eGoober installed, that process checks, is there a new version in our repository? Once it picks up the process, depending on its configuration, it immediately installs it. That means once we release the uh, 16.1 on Friday the 1st um, and you are on auto update, you will come to that new version. Yeah, so for EPL installation customers, we picked a different date. So it will be one month later, 1st of, July, uh, of August. Um, this means there will be in between one or two maintenance releases and then we switch our repositories for our EPL customers similar to 16.1 and Ralph will be having more details for us in what regard that happens. Yeah, for EPL customers, we actually have not a single repository, we have three repositories. One is our default repository called Stylite EPL. Um, that will switch as Birgit showed on the slide on the 1st of August from 14.3 to 16.1. For our EPL customers, we maintain the 14.3 a little longer. That means major bugs and security issues will be fixed for a certain time. And if you want to stay longer on the 14.3 for whatever reason, you can do so by changing your repository configuration from Stylite EPL to Stylite EPL previous. That's how we christened um, the repository which contains the old stable version. Um, 
Yeah. He also has, uh, offers the customers the ability to switch right now if you want to or before the 1st of August. Therefore, you can use the repository we already use for the release candidates and update from there. So that repository is called Stylite EPL Trunk and it will contain a 16.1 or a final 16.1 package by the same time on Friday morning like uh, the community version is updated. If you choose to do the update before 1st of August from that repository, you have to remember to switch back to Starlight EPL to the default repository after the 1st of August, because otherwise you won't get new versions of 16.1. Okay, uh, we have one question here from Peter. I have version 1.6. Should I update to 16.1 now? Yeah, definitely. So <laughs> 1.6, it's about 10 years old. So which means if you either have it on your own installation or have it somewhere from an external hoster, which may still run it on 1.6, this is absolutely out of date and you should update as soon as possible. So if you want to come into our hosting, we offer you to help and get you into our hosting without any extra charge. So you just pay for the hosting. If you need up help for the update um, on your own installation, we will show up a bit later um, more details about how that works and how we can support you in that case. Yeah, technically there is no problem updating from 1.6 to 16.1. Um, it will probably be more a problem of the environment because 16.1 had different requirements for the environment for the PHP version as does 16.1. Yeah, there's also one more question on our slide that's concerning um, older versions like Ecoware 11 or 14. Yeah, so we at the moment in the um, package with Ralph was um, pointing to the EPL previous, we had the 11 version in, and this will be switched over to the 14. So if you are an EPL um, installation customers, you can still get the 14.3 and there will be um, major bug fixes and security updates, but for sure not any um, f new features getting into the 14.3 because there is a 16.1 now. Next point would be what to consider if I use ActiveSync. Yeah, ActiveSync got a major overhaul with the 16.1 with lots of benefits and unfortunately also some drawback. The benefits is we support a lot more devices now with 16.1. We updated to set push. That's an open source project which implement ActiveSync protocol. We updated to their version 2.3. And it, for example, supports now uh, a wider variety of Android devices. It, su it supports um, also Outlook in the versions 2013 and 2016, which is quite a new feature. So you can sync your Outlook via the ActiveSync protocol with eGrouper. But <laughs> <laughs> um, we were with 11.1 and 14.3, we were on uh, a fork which means an, an isolated version of the set push protocol. Someone else developed away from the main set push line by that time. And therefore we are not able to update the state to the current version. What does that mean? You were not update, able to update the state. Active sync protocol means the server has to know what is already on the client. Other protocols like Kaldav Kartav the client basically knows what it has and the server only responds to questions from the client. So that means um, for you quite practical, if you update to 16.1, you have to delete the profile of your, from your mobile device and recreate the profile after the 16.1 update again. So that will sync back the data you had on your device. Um, but it means you have to remove and reinstall the profile. Yeah, so practically you would, on the day before the update, check that all your data is on your server being synced 
and then delete your profile and the next day after the update just recreate it by giving your email address your username and password and it starts syncing and you will have again your mails your contacts your calendar your tasks on your mobile device or then as outlook is supported also can connect your outlook with it but it doesn't mean that i have to do that every time that there's a new update no also one of the reasons why we we going now with the main set push version is to really avoid that situation. Um, I'm also started um, being part of the set push project and helping to, to develop set push to get features which are important for us into the set push or for us and our users into the set push um, project. So we don't expect that um, this has to be done with every update. Probably it, it's not necessary to do it again, but yeah, to get that all that features we have to do it once and you have to delete your profiles and recreate them. Yeah, if you may ask yourself, how would I find out if my users are syncing with eSync or ActiveSync or Kaldav Kartav? Um, is there any chance to know that? Yeah, there are basically two simple answers to that question. One is you get to your asker, they, to your user, ask them to show you they are mobile and you will find out if they are using Kaldav Kartav Sync or Active Sync, or you're using the EPL version where we have some kind of mobile device management in it. It's an application called eSync Pro and eSync Pro shows you as an administrator of your eGroupware installation always which users are currently syncing, when they synced the last time, if the sync is running smoothly or if it's blocking in something or the uh, device hasn't synced uh, for a certain time. It also allows a lot of other things which are part of the mobile device management of the exchange server. So you can force people to use, let's say, a password on their mobile because you don't want to have um, let's say your customer address book getting lost easily. You can also remote wipe um, mobile devices. That's all benefits of the eSync Pro application, which is part of EPL. Yeah, and if you use Cult of Carter for syncing, there's nothing what you need to do. So it doesn't matter if you have an iPhone or you have, your, have an Android phone, for example, and you use a smooth sync for a groupware from Martin Guider. You don't have to recreate anything. It will still work. So it's only eSync or ActiveSync, um, which needs the recreation of the profiles. Yeah, we would then change to the next slide if it works. <laughs> it works. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There are some more technical questions now. The first one would be, is my system ready for eGroupware version 16.1 at all? Yeah, I mean, that's easy to answer if you're running a up-to-date eGroupware version. So if you're running the 14.3, um, there's only a single requirement which changed. 14.3 was running on PHP version 5.3, while 16.1 requires now PHP version 5.4. So if your system already runs 5.4, um, you can eas you easily fulfill all the requirements. Um, if you ask yourself, how do I know which PHP version I run? I just uh, log into eGroupware as an administrator and there's one point called PHP information. I click on it and I can see here, clearly I'm on version 5.6.22, which is a pretty update 5.6 six version so that system would be already ready to run i mean it's already running 16.1 <laughs> it's our demo <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah that system is ready to run 16.1 um so you can just find it in the admin configurations of eGroupware. yeah okay um yeah if someone's not willing to spend so much time or to take care about his PHP version. Do you provide help in that case? Yeah, of course we do. We support uh, the software we develop and 
while doing that, we also help you in updates. I think we'll have a couple of special offers for the update um, also later on in that mm -hmm. webinar. Okay. Yeah, one more question was, should I expect a service disruption? Yeah, it really depends a bit on where your system is running or where you, you are, are actually. So if you are in hosting, we will do the update process somewhere in the evening and let you know before and it takes some seconds because it's just a click for us to put you from a hosting 14.3 into 16.1 if you have an own installation it again depends on where you are if you are already on an actual server environment which um, fits into the requirements for the 16.1 the update process will be pretty easy and it will again take just um, some time for the update process itself and for getting the new um, version on your system. But if you have an older version, uh, we recommend to use another virtual machine updating your test system you may already have um, to the new version, uh, putting in there a backup of your 14.3, for example, or also an older version, update that one. And then you may have some test users, some power users who who can test if everything's working and also get more used to how it works with 16.1. And then you start a real update at a certain time. So the, the short answer is yes and no. <laughs> Yeah, it really, as Birgit already points out, it depends a bit on what Linux distribution you are and what PHP version that Linux distribution contained. Some Linux distributions like Ubuntu are easily upgradable, so you can, um, within limits, upgrade to a newer version, giving you the PHP version you want to use. Um, others might require a new installation and porting over the eCooper data to the new system. Um, I also see here suggestions about PHP version. We generally recommend to use the newest version, which is at the moment 7.0, um, which is at the moment only available from the major distributions from Ubuntu 16.04. Um, it is installable uh, from to several other distributions, for example, Red Hat or CentOS 7 um, has PHP 7 installable. PHP 5.6 is equally good and usable. PHP 7 had some pretty good benchmark results as being in some usage cases um, even double as quick as previous uh, PHP versions. So that's, yeah, maybe your update to 16.1 if you're using an older Linux distribution is also an opportunity to get to something more recent or something really up to date in that regard yeah maybe um one of our uh, participants of the webinar can tell us a bit more about what are you interested in do you use an own installation are you hosting customer are you um, an epl customer or a community user so about what should we talk a bit more in detail um, before we go to the next slide what we prepared nathan is typing right now we have some customers from france also no hosting customer nathan yes rob is typing yeah, so Nathan, you can just let us know if you want to update pretty soon. We are happy to update in your installation because there are huge benefits with the 16.1. For example, being able to use the mobile devices and they easily access your data. So if you think this should happen pretty soon, just let us know. Someone else is typing, Rob and Nathan. Community user here. Will the legacy groups feature continue to work in 16.1? Rob is asking. Yeah, um, that's easy to answer. I think day before yesterday, I updated the legacy groups application to be able to work with the 16.1 installation. So yeah, if you update your installation to 16.1, um, the groups application, which gives you a uh, some group management in the community version 
will also be available for 16.1. It's actually the same repository, so you just use the credentials you get with when you send your user registration, or if you already have that repository into your distribution, yeah, nothing will change. It will also update the groups app to 16.1. So Rob, that was an answer. Yes, perfect, thanks. Okay. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Any other questions you have? So far, no. So then yeah, we then would change it. to the service of us. Yeah, so we prepared three kind of service offers for the so migration. For the migration. Um, so if you are a hosting customer, there's nothing you need to take into account. Um, it will be free migration and it just happens. If you are uh, community customers, you can decide if you want to migrate into our hosting, then this is again free of charge. You just migrate into a hosting and pay for the hosting. If you are an EPL customer, you would, we have a special offer, which is a mixture of technical support and two hours workshop. So as a kind of so, so consulting and support chance to talk about tips and tricks, how to use the 16.1, what are maybe um, shortcuts, which I haven't got before, or what are new features, which are in 16.1. We'll do that on your system. So one-to-one -one. and just talking about the questions you may have in mind. Um, so for EPL customers, we have a special price within one week. We could do that for 565 euros. If you buy it later on, it will be 20% more. So it will be 695 euros. If you have an own installation like Rob had and want to migrate into the EPL, but still have it on your own server, we have an example created, which means it goes up to 955 euros per year or for the first year, but it's uh, just an example because it goes for 10 named users and you will pay it with a monthly rate and 20% discount for the first year for that subscription value. If you need more users, for sure you can also adapt that. And it also includes that package on the left side, which means the technical support for the update and the two hour workshop. So the workshop is included in all the offers? The workshop is included in all the offers. Mm -hmm. And on the right hand side, we have the package for someone who wants to stay on a community, but needs some help with the update process and wants to have the workshop. So in that case, you would pay 1,356 euros in the next week or of afterwards 1,695 euros. And you may think, oh, why the difference to the left package? And therefore I hand over for some reasons <laughs> to Ralph. Yeah. Reason is pretty simple. Um, also, so a community version, which is freely available, needs to be to be developed, and we need to put time, and time also means money into it. And it is the uh, Stylight customers or the uh, EPL subscribers, which just pay the development, and therefore we can offer these customers just a better price because they're already supporting the the Ecoware project and the Ecoware software as we do it with community users. Community users are welcome to use the EPL, the community version as it is right now. If you need support from us, we simply charge you different from what we charge customers who already supporting the Ecoware software. That's the reason I think that's perfectly understandable for everyone. Yeah, so, um... There are a few things what you require for the update process in general. So um, what are the requirements or the um, when does these packages are available or can be done for that price? Yeah, I mean, the requirements are pretty easy. Um, 
of course we can't you can't say there is an old uh, Debian 6 version or Debian 5 version with tons of software of it could you please get it this to a recent Debian version with all the soft with all the services still running um, I mean everyone understands that can't be done for uh, these really fair fixed price so what is this included is it means your target system which is either the same system you're running the older eGroupware version or it could be if your older eGroupware version's operating system is not fulfilling the requirements it doesn't have PHP 5.4 available at least so you install a new let's say Debian 8 or Ubuntu 16.04 uh, we would do the installation on that system so what we are requiring you is that the target system has the ability to run the recent um, PHP version. And then we either do an in-place update or we do a migration of the old eGroupware data to the new system. Okay, Birgit, um, the special prices, they are valid until July 6th and the general pr prices, the white ones there, yeah, so the white prices would be show are valid till end of October. So you can buy it in our shop and we will send you with the uh, newsletter where we send also the link to the video. We will send the link to the landing page how, where you can then buy these kind of packages and support. It's just... Um, easier if we prepare the link or send you the link then afterwards then you can easily buy it do we have more questions in our chat before we had peter nathan and rob so if there's anything else please just write it in our chat um in between perhaps you could um again explain what's the difference between community edition and epl yeah, I mean, there are several differences. Um, I believe we have a page on the website which explains the differences in detail. I can just go through a couple. Um, we already covered that mobile device management, the Easing mm -hmm. Pro application. Another yeah, popul popular feature from the EPL version is the versioning in File Manager. It means if a file is deleted, I can restore it. I can also restore not only just a deleted file, I can restore previous versions. So if I know someone reworked that offer or that document last week and I'm not happy with the changes made or some paragraph got completely lost, I can just go back to whatever old version um, of it. So that's something I don't get with the community edition. No, that's not contained in the community mm -hmm. edition. It's something which is solely available in EPL. Yeah, we have other things which are, for example, in project manager with the gun chart. You can easily manage with the EPL function by just moving in the gun chart your task or your projects from one time to another, make it longer or just move it to another date and it will change directly in the project or it will change directly in the infolog entry. This is something what we um, have made only available for our EPL customers um, so that you can easily work as a project manager within the gun chart and move your tasks around. Anything else to add? Yeah, there are, there are really more small things. So for example, especially with the 16.1, we offer you to have the PGP encryption in general being available mm -hmm. and for community edition we have it available in the email module but for EPL customers we also have it available in the infolog module so that you can enforce additional security if you use infolog not only as an own task list but also as an information system in your organization and therefore make it more secure with that PGP encryption and several others so just have a look on the um, website or for sure if you are in that consulting workshop we could also look more into details where are EPL features helping my daily business um, to make it more effective mm -hmm. yeah good to know okay um, 
yeah if we don't have any more questions concerning the service offers thanks a lot to Birgit and also to Ralph yeah also would like to say thank you to everybody joining our webinar and hope you enjoy the eGroupware 16.1 working with it and yeah fine to see you again in further webinars yeah thanks to all our participants yeah and thanks for me and i hope the 16.1 makes you more productive in your daily business using eGroupware yeah we're looking forward to seeing you soon probably or hopefully in our next webinar have a nice evening and um yeah goodbye